Hello there, everyone. My name's Andy Quilden, uh, the promoter, matchmaker, jack of all trades right here at Revolution Pro Wrestling. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome you to another free match right here on the YouTube, a YouTube channel with its very own name now, forward slash Rev Pro. Very imaginative, I know, uh, but please support us uh, by liking this video, subscribing to the channel, telling your mates about it um, as we're building this channel from the ground up. Now, today's match, it's one from the vaults. We've picked it quite literally out of nowhere um, and really the reason we've done this is to illustrate to you the hidden gems um, which are in our our video archive and this one comes from Uprising 2014 from York Hall Bethnal Green um, it's Dave Mastiff going one-on-one -on -one with the Bullet Club's machine gun Carl Anderson and this was Carl uh, Anderson's UK debut um, big heavyweight clash um, and you know, it's one of those that very much went under the radar at the time. So check it out, um, enjoy it, um, and don't forget you can check out our full video archive um, from rpwondemand.com. Um, and if you want to buy some merch, check out shoprevpro.com. Um, thanks very much, guys. Enjoy, and I promise we'll continue to bring you the free stuff right here on this very YouTube. Well, that is the IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team Championship that he holds with Doc Gallows. Second time he's held it. First time I believe was with Giant Bernard. Now Dave Mastiff has got to get a win. And this would be a huge one. And the fans are really behind him as well. That's it, these fans understand. We can't let these Americans continually come in here and overshadow our great talented wrestlers. Oh, you appear to have suddenly found some form of moral compass, have you? I, I just say, it takes a lot, it takes a lot of preparation. That's why we only do these shows every few months because of my necessary training. The locker. And this wonderful venue, the, the glitterati of wrestling that have been here. We've had Bret Hart here, we've had Sting here, Mark Rollable, Rocco, Georgia Hart. Tonight we even have Ricky Knight here. Ricky Knight, wonderful man. Sitting in attendance watching because Revolution Pro Wrestling is the place to be. And Ricky Knight, a great name in British wrestling. He's come along, along with many others, to see what we are all about. He's actually come from Norwich, which is a fair few hours away. Indeed so. This man here, I assume, scouting talent for his own company, WAW. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised at all, and uh, a man who knows a thing or two about talent in wrestling. Yes, were you referring to me or were you referring to Ricky Knight? I was talking to Ricky Knight. Oh, okay, talking about you as well. I was talking about Ricky Knight here particularly. His daughter's not, uh, not doing too badly, is she, at the moment? Absolutely not. She's turned up in the WWE and fair play to that girl. Carl Anderson just uh, grimly, wryly acknowledging the strength of Dave Mastiff. Shot to shot. Oh, look at the way Carl Anderson fell. But who does Carl Anderson think he is? Look at the size of Dave Mastiff. This man's almost double his weight, isn't he? I'll tell you something about Carl Anderson. Carl Anderson was trained by a gentleman by the name of Les Thatcher. Now, you mentioned earlier a man called Dean Ambrose. Les Thatcher trained Dean Ambrose. He trained people like Nigel McGuinness, Jamie Noble, and a gentleman by the name of the, the late Umaga, who you know very well, Andy Simmons. Yes, I did once beat Umaga in a cage match. You're absolutely right. Yeah, you say you beat him in a cage match. Results don't matter. Everyone can remember. I was on the WWF TV. You can find it on YouTube. But what I was trying to say is that uh, Les Thatcher's pedigree as a, as a trainer, as a competitor himself, in fact, to produce somebody like Carl Anderson, you know if you've been trained by Les Thatcher, you are a great technically sound wrestler. Undoubtedly, you know, his, uh, his list, as you've just listed for us, obviously a world, world-class trainer. In fact, when I went into, uh, before I knew where to go train to wrestle, I contacted Les Thatcher myself about getting uh, some brochures. A man who sits on the board of the Cauliflower Alley Club and... And you missed that drop kick though, didn't you? I, well, I'll tell you, uh, that was a powerful, powerful drop kick there from Dave Mastiff. Who knew that man could jump so high? Well, if you're scouting Dave Mastiff like Carl Anderson would have done, you shouldn't be surprised by things like that. If you think about the way Dave Mastiff likes to finish his matches with that senton into the corner. That's it, I guess, and yeah. Maybe it's not so obvious. Incredibly, incredibly agile man and a fast man as well. This is, as you said, a former British heavyweight champion. He's on a bad run of luck at the moment, started by you and Rampage Brown, we might add. I believe, yes, he tagged him with Davy Boy Smith Jr. 
and we beat him then, right? I think that was his that first... Was you did, you stole a victory. That was his first loss in Revolution Pro Wrestling. You say stole a victory, I say earn a victory. Carl Anderson, himself, a former GHC Tag Team Champion, winner of the G1 Tag League in 2009, and twice winner of the World Tag League. But a difficult time for Carl Anderson and his fellow Bullet Club members. They had a particularly poor G1 climax. I heard it go. I heard, Club. I heard it didn't go down too well today at the G1. So consequently, there's a, a lot here riding on Carl Anderson's performances as the leader now of the Bullet Club. He has to set the standard, and he's done it there brutally on Dave Mastiff. Mastiff holding his knee. Really clutching his knee there. And the boos of the crowd for Carl Anderson. How times have changed. There was once a time when Carl Anderson basked in the glory of the fans, but not now. The count now halfway. I think he might well take the count out of victory. That's very sensible to do that, surely. Absolutely, a victory is a victory. He's going to target that leg though, isn't he? Of course. It's a very professional job, isn't it, by Carl Anderson? Very, very professional. Just targeting the knee, going for the posterior anterior cruciate ligaments. Yes. Going for those uh, fluid-filled sacs in the knee that can the fluid can become more viscous, can swell, you can't move the knee, that puts more strain on those ligaments. I always like to point things out on him that sometimes you don't see. Dave Mastiff was uh, clubbering, uh, clobbering Carl Anton on the back, and they didn't look like much, but I can assure you those big, heavy, thick arms of Dave Mastiff, anything, any, any strike he throws, whether it be these big, thick, hairy legs with big, thick, hairy arms, you're going to get hurt. Dave Mastiff is a, a model of efficiency in wrestling, isn't he? he? Every strike counts. Absolutely. Efficiency. Efficient Dave. And on the subject of efficiency, the way Carl Anderson is, is attacking the injured leg of Dave Mastiff and then he hooks the good leg so that all of that energy to kick out has to go on, into the injured leg. Very, very Absolutely. Clever. You're kicking out with that injured leg, you're only going to do further damage. You need to you need to try and avoid try and avoid any more physical asser assertion. And how in a wrestling match, Andy Simmons, can you avoid exerting a leg? Well, it's it's near on impossible, wrestling. isn't it? It is near on impossible. Well, the fans may not like it, but it is very smart wrestling, it has to be said. One to the gut. Carl Anderson has been ready to be here. He was unable to be here at our last York Hall show. Bad luck Farley, one of his compadres, took his place. He's been desperate to be here ever since. And Dave, I think, uh, trying to wave his leg up. He may be, yes, Carl Anderson may be regretting it now, as you say. Mastiff just trying to shake out that injury. I believe he was set to face Dave Mastiff last time. That's exactly so. He's probably thinking to himself, he didn't turn up that time, this should all be done and dusted by now. You'd probably rather not gotten that plan. How much does that affect you as a wrestler when your scheduled opponent changes or, or a, a fight is postponed? I tell you, it affects you a lot. But with moves like that, sometimes I wonder Dave Mastiff has not come prepared enough because Kyle Anton clearly could see what Dave Mastiff was doing. He knows what Davis Mastiff's thinking. And I assume, of course, we've never made the connection. Bad luck, Farley would have got plenty of tip to Kyle Anderson. You're absolutely right about that. He will have told him how to beat him. And for Dave Mastiff, the thought of losing to two Bullet Club members in a row, not an appetising one. He would never get asked to join the club then if he loses to two, would he? Have you ever been asked to be in their club? Oh, come on, as if. No, I've never been asked to be in any club. No, you're just a nerd, aren't you? I don't even get library cards. Carl Anderson urging Dave Mastiff on the... You get what you ask for, don't you? Absolutely, and I don't understand wrestling like it's not. Certainly, Carl Anson, he said that he had a smart strategy. I'm beginning to think sometimes you can get a little bit lost. That isn't smart strategy. The worst thing to do is be in the corner when Dave Massive is attacking. Carl Anson knew it. He got out of the way. He's trapped with a kick to the back of the head. That didn't take him down. How many men do you know can get him kicked in the head that hard? And, and not back of the head as well, one of the weakest areas of the head. 
and Madonna Oblongar to the back of the brain stem. European uppercut. And another one. More of a forearm, really, I suppose. Anderson's in a perilous position here. He could fall very easily now, couldn't he? Look how heavy those arms are coming up. Mastiff with such ferocity of the strike. The look on the face of Mastiff. Oh, Mastiff just pushed Chris Roberts out of the way there. That could cost him, couldn't it? That could well, cost him some money, at least. I think it probably will. Uh, it put him in money. Way. Chris Roberts has probably made the decision to only issue him with a rebuke rather than a, a heavier sanction, such as a disqualification. But as you say, it will cost him money. That might have cost Carl Anton a couple of teeth. One straight fist to the mouth for you, Mr. Anderson. And I think Dave might be setting him up for a... I would never have thought you... Oh, my goodness me, the German suplex is beautiful! It's going to win! Mastiff wins! Oh, no! Did you see that deadlift German suplex? Only you wouldn't have a clue because you don't lift weights, but that is remarkable strength. Any man in this building is going to be in awe. Anyone that's seen the inside of a gym is going to understand how hard I could barely do that to my four-year-old son. I never thought I'd see the day that you became an advocate of Dave Mastiff. Now, oh, Anderson knew it was coming. Knew that German suplex into the bottom turnbuckle was on its way. He's playing games, Carl Anderson. Charges in. Mastiff's caught him. Oh, but so clever. Oh, that is absolutely brilliant. I that think brilliant from Dave Mastiff. Now he's got a chance. From where we are, Holly, I don't know if you can see, I think Carl Anderson may well have smashed his head on the ring post. I think you're right. <laughs> I don't think he's all there. I think if he pulls himself into that position. Here we go. Dave Mastiff, the cannonball. Oh, he misses. You said Carl Anderson wasn't all there. You were wrong, Andy Simmons. I think he's, he's, he's far more away than I gave him credit for. But he's still now, feeling the effects. How much wherewithal has Mastiff got? Lifts him! Lifts him! Incredible strength! Incredible strength! The swivel stun gun! The one, the two, the no! Dave Mastiff's up! The swivel stun gun! As far as I'm aware, Ollie, that, that move has won championship belts. Dan one Mastiff of, has just kicked out! That's one of the most deadliest moves in Carl Anson's arsenal. And this is why Red Group Revolution Pro is so good. Everyone brings their A game. I say it every time, but I really mean it. My God, Dave Mastiff, it's tough. My God. And that time he blocks the gun stun. No. The clothesline to the back of the head there, really throwing Carl Anton. It buys Dave Mastiff some time. He may be about to get his win. He's got his shotgun, look. A little nod there to the Bullet Club, a little bit of hubris perhaps. Catches him! Catches him exquisitely! Oh, Dave Mastiff, you were so close! You know, one thing I'll say about Dave Mastiff, he's still a loser though, isn't he? He hasn't... He hasn't managed to end that losing streak. Fair effort for you, Dave. Fair effort. But the end of the day, you couldn't get the job done. Oh, come on, Andy Boy Timmons. He was so close. Holly, I think you can tell from my commentary during this match, I wanted to get behind him. I wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt. But at the end of the day, Dave, seems like you're still a loser. And I can turn my back on you forever now. I'm not worried about you. Well, Carl Anderson victorious, the Bullet Club yet again, and their arms raised here at the York Hall. And the leader, the second leader in the increasingly illustrious history of the Bullet Club, the machine gun, Carl Anderson.